Hey guys, welcome back to One Low Week on my channel. This week I'm doing a series of short form videos talking about the Apple TV Plus show Wundla. Every day I'm going to post an episode review and at the end of the week a full series review including an analysis of source material, design, and themes. Today we're talking about Season 1, Episode 2, Life Forms. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoy. Starting off with the synopsis of Episode 2, Life Forms, Eva discovers she's on a planet called Orbona where she meets a telepathic water bear named Otto and a surly alien named Rovinder. So we open with Eva in a strange wilderness that she doesn't recognize. And the first character we meet besides Eva in this episode is a character called Rovinder. One part that I love about this episode is that she calls out to him in multiple human languages, I believe Japanese and German and English. I think it's interesting as someone who's fascinated with language myself that she learned multiple human languages in the sanctuary. I thought that was really interesting. We see her get caught by something that is called a hippo plant. It catches her and tries to eat her. And then Rovinder, who is yet unnamed, helps her out. And we see Rovinder say Sheena to her when she says, what's your name? Which is kind of a gag. Sheena obviously means be quiet or be silent or something along those lines in the Cerulean language. But she thinks that's his name. It's kind of a funny bit running through this episode and the next that she thinks his name is Sheena. After she meets Rovinder, we see them both get captured by Bastille. And Bastille's character design is flawless. Like I said in the last episode, his design is perfect. And his voice acting, I believe Chike Aquanko is his voice actor. All the flowers, he does amazing. He has an Australian or New Zealand accent, which a little odd, but if you listen to the audiobook, the Bastille accent was a little insufferable. So I'm glad that he has just like a normal human accent. So during the scene where Eva is escaping from Bastille's camp with Mother and Rovinder and Otto, the score is fabulous. Like I said, Joy Nya, excuse me if I'm not saying her name correctly, did an amazing job composing this music. I believe this was the track Stay Away From My Family. Really good. Love it. We also get introduced to the character Otto in this scene, who is a water bear who Eva can telepathically communicate with. In the book, his words were a little more simple. He had a little more broken English because it was more primal. And in this, he has he's almost a comic character like the Omnipod. He has full sentences and it's kind of like a dumb character instead of a primal character and i wish his language was a little more primal and simple because he's not stupid he just doesn't have human language he's thinking with emotions so i wish that that had been translated a little bit better the voice acting was really nice though i do like that mother was in bastille's camp because that closes a whole like six chapters of the book that we could have just wasted time i like that they just picked up mother and ran. And speaking of language, the way that we bridge the communication gap in this show is through a gum called jargum, which is kind of funny. Jargum, jargon, it's like a portmanteau, it's funny. In the book, they use something called a vocal transcoder where you inhale nanites and they translate in real time in your head and to other people and you have to carry something with you that helps you translate. N the gum thing, a little more simple. I think for a kid, it's easier to understand that you just chew gum and something you can understand because this show is for kids at the end of the day. We also get another huge drop of information from Mother. She says that an unknown contamination essentially destroyed an entire generation of embryos in the sanctuary and Eva was the only one born out of generation nine. And that is not in the book. So I am completely in the dark about that. I hope it comes up later. I think that'll be a really, really cool thing to expand on in later seasons. At the end of the episode, we come to the conclusion that they are on Earth, but then Rovinder says, well, this is called Orbona. This is not called Earth. And in the book, that was done at the end of the book, not at the beginning. So it's a little strange that they're doing it so early, but in later episodes, it kind of makes a little bit more sense. I did love the scene with the star chart and seeing all the constellations that did not match with the Orbunian constellations. I think that was really cool. So with that, we um, come to the end of episode two, Life Forms. I'll see you guys on the next one when we talk about episode three, Bargain. Peace, y'all.